Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Francesca, I'm 25 years old and I've been living in Paris for the last three years. I originally moved here for my master's degree and I've just started working back in January and I just make all these videos about life in Paris as foreigner, um, tips and tricks, the sights, all of that fun stuff. So today's video is one that has been really requested in my DMs on Instagram. I've had so many people DM me and ask me questions and it's about how to find an apartment here, how to find somewhere to live, what sites did I use, um, like finding a nice place to live, dossiers and all that stuff which we're going to address in the video. Finding an apartment here is definitely like very difficult and it's not <laughs> at all easy especially it's not even easy if you're French so let alone if you're not French it's ridiculously hard and I think we all got duped by Emily in Paris where she turns up and she's like oh here's my chambre de bonne and it's like I would pay like thousands of euros for that that is not a chambre de bonne if you want to see a chambre de bonne see my room tour because I live in a real chambre de bonne so first things first we're going to talk about how to find the apartments that you're interested in applying for and now this is actually easier to do if you are already in the country because apartments here do go really quickly so the minute you see one you have to sort of apply go visit within you know 24 hours 48 hours because the demand is quite high so I would definitely suggest first and foremost, if you are currently outside of France and you're looking for a place, if you're coming to study or you just want to come for a couple of months, I would recommend getting an Airbnb first and then you at least have an address here and you can then use that to apply for something more permanent. When I first moved to Paris, I originally moved in with roommates in a flat share in 14th arrondissement and I used the website called La Cap de Cloc to find my place. Um, I'll put all of the links for all of these websites in the description below, but I use Le Cup de Caloc, which is basically a map of people looking for roommates and you can just go through and like see pictures, contact people, they tell you how many people are living in the apartment, how much the rent's going to be, what's included, that kind of stuff. And if you enjoy living with roommates, it's definitely a good experience. If you're new to the city and you want to make friends, it's also a good way to do it. But I would say like be aware that they can request for certain people. They might say like no students, they might say professionals only. I had one that I was interested in when I was first applying and it was a mother and daughter who were basically just renting out a room in their apartment and they were like you're going to be allowed to do laundry only on this day, you're going to have to be in the flat by this time every night and I was like no I want some freedom, I'm not doing that and eventually I found like a good flat share but I would just say be very careful, spend some time talking to people, don't let them pressure you by being like oh there's five other people who are interested like no, you know, follow your gut if it's going to be a good fit or not. If you're looking for something that is just your own, then you are going to want to use sites like Sologer, which is a website where um, different estate agents as well as individuals can post apartments that are available and you can filter by things like uh, size, area, uh, what type of apartment, you know, how many bedrooms, any other features like a balcony. And it's really good. It will bring you up with a list and you can contact the agents through this website. And then you have Le Bon Coin, which is a little bit like Craigslist, and this is actually where I found my apartment. For the most part, it's individuals, which is great because you then are gonna have to pay agency fees, which is obviously a big bonus because it's already expensive, but you do have to be aware for scams. I would say definitely look quite regularly on Le Bon Coin because you'll start to notice the same apartments coming up every time. And you have to question yourself, if it's been months and these apartments aren't being rented, what's wrong with them? Because apartments in Paris go very quickly. So if you're seeing the same apartment time in, time out, there's an issue there. You will also be asked to provide something called a dossier, which is documents proving that you can rent the apartment. And be aware because on Le Bon Coin, you will have people that will say, oh, I need a copy of your, uh, your bank to show that you've got enough money and I need a copy of this and that. And these things should really stand out to you as not being legitimate. So don't be sending anybody money, don't be sending deposits and things like that before you sign a contract. You really have to watch out on the long run because people will try and take advantage of you, especially if you're quite desperate in your search. So I briefly mentioned before about a dossier, which is your documents and, you know, watching out for scammers asking you to include certain things. So we're going to talk a little bit more about your dossier and what needs to be in here. So when it comes to your dossier, you're going to have a range of documents and these are going to vary a little bit depending on whether you're a student or whether you're working or how you're financing things. If you're a student like I was when I first signed up for an apartment, most of the documents are going to be for your guarantors, who were my parents, and then I just provided a letter as well which explains, you know, my parents aren't French, they don't live in France, but here are the equivalent documents 
for what you've requested and just explain to them. First thing you're always gonna have to include is a copy of your ID. This can be your passport, it can be a residency card, it can be a national identity card, anything like that that has your photo and shows you are who you say you are. And then you're probably also gonna be wanting to put in the ID of your guarantors so that they can just verify that. You're also gonna be needing to do your last three pay slips or the last three pay slips for your guarantors to show that you have enough money to pay for the rent every month. And pay attention here because a lot of places in France will ask that your monthly income is three times the amount of rent. So you're also gonna be asked to include something called your avis d'impôt, which is essentially your French tax return. Obviously, if you don't live in France and your guarantors aren't French, you aren't gonna have a French tax return. So what you can do is just include the tax return for your country and explain in a letter in your dossier that it's the equivalent to highlight any relevant information. That's what I did and it worked. And then on top of that, you're gonna to need to have a few things that you can pop in to just really strengthen your dossier. So this can be anything like a work contract, if you have a job which shows that you're out of your probationary period, shows the type of contract that you have, shows how much you earn monthly, or you can have a letter called an attestation from your employer, which also you know, details the same information. If you're a student, you're gonna to need to include your student card or a copy of registration that shows you're a student. If your parent or your guarantors are property owners, you can include proof of that as well, which shows that they own their property rather than rent, for example, which just puts them in a bit of a better financial situation and that obviously reflects better on you. If you're currently renting your own place, I would include things like rent receipts that show that you've paid your rent on time every month and it also shows how much you're capable of paying. And then you can also put in things like recommendations from current landlords, you know, who attest that you're a good tenant, you're take care of the property, you pay your rent on time, that sort of thing. And then as I said, I also included a letter in mine which just was like my front cover and basically said, please find within this dossier pieces one, two, three, four, five, etc. And I explained what each piece was if it wasn't French. Things like, for example, my proof of ID, didn't need to explain that, but then things like the taxes I explained and talked people through. And I also just included a little brief presentation about myself here. It says, you know, hi, my name is Francesca, I'm a student, I currently study here. I'm looking for a place for the next year to see me through to the end of my studies. I think it adds a little bit of a human touch, which is quite nice. And the landlord might not look at it at all, but he also might be interested in it. So. so that's pretty much it for the dossier. I will also put some links down below, which explain the dossier in a little bit more detail so that you can refer back to them if you're putting one together yourself. And we're gonna talk a little bit about things that you should be looking out for when you're going on visit. So you found an advert for an apartment. It's perfect. You love it. It's within your budget. You have your dossier. You contact the person. You either phone them or you email them, depending on how they've asked to be contacted. I would definitely recommend phoning because that way it's quicker and they appreciate the human touch. But also if you're not confident in your French, you can email them, that's fine too. A lot of the time I would phone up, have a quick chat and say, can I send you my dossier? Is there an email address to send you my dossier, etc. And then once that's sent, if they approve of your dossier, they're going to invite you to come and visit. When you go with you, take a paper copy of your dossier too. Even if the landlord hasn't asked for it, it's a nice touch. I made a verbal agreement when I came to visit this apartment that I was going to take it. That way he cancelled the afternoon appointments to come and visit the apartment. And we agreed on a date for him to write up the contract and me to come back and visit and sign. My landlord was really chill about everything. And so instead of having to provide a check on the day that I came to sign the contract, I just did a bank transfer instead. And then once that money had gone through to him, he organized with me another day to come and collect the keys. Obviously a lot of Parisian buildings are very old and if you're a student you're renting something like a chambre de bonne or a small studio, there are some landlords who are going to try and take advantage of that. They're going to take advantage of the fact that you're young, possibly naive, um, that you don't have a lot of money, your budget's quite tight, and they're also going to take advantage of the fact that people are desperate uh, to find a place to live. You know, don't be super fussy but also be reasonable. Things that should be red flags are going to be things like mould, damaged furniture, damaged walls, cracks, peeling paint, you know, things that really are not acceptable or that could pose a health problem. Do the windows open? Do the windows close? Are they double glazed? A lot of the time, if you're renting a smaller apartment, you're gonna be sharing a toilet in a corridor. Who has access to this? Is it locked? Do they have keys? How many people are you sharing with? Who is responsible for cleaning it. For example, there was one apartment that I was really interested in and it looked beautiful and so I contacted the landlord and asked if I could send across my dossier and he said of course but I want to let you know the toilet is shared, it's in the corridor, it's shared between two other people but it's 
a hole in the ground toilet. And I was like, absolutely not. Um, I was not gonna be sharing a hole in the ground toilet with two people I don't know. I just thought that's gonna be so uncomfortable, so unhappy, um, it's not worth it. The toilet was a big issue. But things that I was willing to compromise on were things like not having a washing machine. You know, I go to the laundrette once a week and yes, it's frustrating, it's annoying. I would much rather have a washing machine, but it's not the end of the world. And so for me, prioritizing having a bathroom over having a washing machine was something that I was willing to compromise on. You should be aware that since July 2019, there is something called the encadrement de loyer, which has been in place in Paris, which is essentially a rent cap. And it says, depending on the neighborhood and the style and type of apartment, there is a maximum amount of rent that they can charge per square meter. And I will link down below the website that you can use to calculate what this is. And that's gonna be a really handy tool for finding out, you know, looking at apartments and saying, is this person being reasonable in the rent request or are they actually breaking the law? Bear in mind that they can ask for a little bit more than what the encadrement says because of things like newly renovated or if there's a balcony, that sort of thing. Uh, but for the most part, they really should be following these guidelines. And that's a really good way of not being taken advantage of. So I think those are all of my big tips on finding an apartment. Um, then a few things to really be aware of is you normally have two types of contract. You have furnished and unfurnished. Furnished is what I'm in. This is something that you rent out for a year. And then this automatically renews every year at the date of when you signed your contract. Um, you don't need to be filling in any more paperwork for that. It's just an automatic thing unless you or the landlord sends your notice of eviction or that you want to leave the apartment. If you're the renter, the tenant, you have to give one month's notice. And if you're the landlord, you give three months notice. And then you have to give this notice by registered letter with receipt of acknowledgement. Um, otherwise, it's not valid. You then have the unfurnished, which is a three year contract, again, automatically renews. I can't remember the exact dates, but I do know you have a little bit longer in terms of the notice period you have to give. And so I think that is everything I have to say about how to find an apartment. Sorry, this video is probably not the best organized. It feels like it was a little bit all over the place. Um, and I'm definitely like looking off for a lot of it. But that's pretty much everything that I have to say. Obviously, general advice such as really read your contract, really check it, don't get rushed into anything. I think that is absolutely everything I have to say. I will link everything down below that I've mentioned and talked about. Uh, if you have any specific questions or there's anything I didn't cover that you'd like me to talk about, feel free to either leave me a comment down below or you can message me on Instagram and I will try and get back to you soonish. Um, but that is everything that I have to say. It's Easter weekend, so I hope you all have had a lovely Easter if you celebrate. If not, just hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, eat lots of chocolate and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.